Hello and welcome to Swift Goose. Today we're going to look at functions in Swift, specifically functions with and without parameters and return values, what void return type is, storing functions and variables, and functions that return other functions. First, let's start with a function that has no parameters and no return values. Func hello. And you don't need to actually put an arrow here. Sometimes you'll see an arrow, but if there's no return type, you don't need to put an arrow. And then we'll put our braces and simply print hello. And now let's look at a function where a parameter is passed in. Funct measure flower. So we'll put grams and double. Print we measured grams of flour. And now let's call both of our functions. Hello and measure flour. We'll put 1.234 grams. Press play. And we have hello and we measured 1.23 grams of flour. If you don't want to have to type in your grams label every time that you're calling your function, you can put an argument label in front of your variable name. So here we put a underscore and now we can get rid of our grams label here. The underscore just indicates a blank argument label, in which case you don't need to specify your argument label when calling your function. Now let's look at functions that return values. Comment these out. Func goodbye. In this case, we are going to put the arrow because we are returning a value of a type. The type that we want to return is string. Now we can put the entire function body on one line and then you can avoid using the return statement altogether. When we call our goodbye function, it's gonna return a single string, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. So let's call our function and store it in a variable name. varcia equals goodbye. Print sia. You can pass in functions as parameters, you can pass in arrays, structs, tuples, and same thing with return values. But now let's look at what void is. When you create a function that has no return value, as we said above, you don't actually need to put the arrow in. Let's make a function called void test. And we'll just print out testing void. Now let's print the type of the void test function to see what it contains void test, but we don't want to actually call the function, so we just leave off the parentheses. And we see that we have a function that returns basically nothing, an empty parentheses. What happens if we come up here and add a return of void? And remember we said earlier that we don't need to specify this for a function that has no return values, but let's see what happens now. It's still the same. According to Swift documentation, what's actually happening here is that void is a type alias for basically an empty tuple, which is this empty parenthesis set here. So if we hold option key and click on our void, you'll see that there's a question mark there. And it gives us the basic documentation of what void is. And this is the return type of functions that don't explicitly specify a return type that is an empty tuple. And further down, Swift is saying that if we don't specify a return type, there's still always gonna be a return type anyway of basically an empty tuple, which is void. But one last thing to note here, even though we have a return value of void, we can't actually call return void because we'll get an error. Unexpected non-void return value. And now let's look at storing functions inside of variables. Storing a function inside of a variable in Swift is just like storing any other type or value inside of a variable. Because Swift is type safe, we can declare our function type ahead of time for our variable. var my func, and here we'll put the type that we want. So we, we want a function that takes no parameters and returns nothing either. So in this case, we can put an empty set of parentheses, forward arrow, and an empty set of parentheses, and now we have a variable myfunc that is of type function that has no parameters and has no return. And we can set this equal right away just by putting two of our curly braces here. And then let's just print out garbage. 
Again, let's call our print and the type of our my function variable to see what's inside. This is showing us that my func is of type function that takes no parameter and has no return. And to actually call our function, we can type my func and then put open and close parentheses. Garbage. And if you want to add parameters and return types, you'll need to specify them in our type declaration above. Let's return a string in this one, in which case we'll have to put a semicolon here, and then we can put our return salad. Now when we call our my func, it's going to return salad. So you see it printed out garbage, but the actual return value is salad. And finally, let's look at functions that return other functions. Let's start by creating our function name, returns func, and in this case we will pass in one parameter called outside of type string, and then we're going to return a function. Now, in this return, we will put a function that takes a string and returns a string. Since our outer function here returns a function, we need to put a return and then our curly braces here. Now remember, our function that we're returning also has to return a string. So let's put in a return blank for now. But we're getting an error saying the type of closure argument list expects one argument. We told Swift that we're going to pass in a string. In order to make this true, we have to put in a parameter here. In this case, we'll call this inside. And Swift already knows this is type string, so we don't have to put in string like this. It already knows that it's type string from up here. And then we have to put in in. The in keyword will let Swift know that the inside parameter is going to be used in our function here. Since it can get a little confusing, let's put some print statements before and after. Our outside parameter is still available to us in this current inner function scope. So let's return a string that contains the outside and inside parameters so we can see what's in both of them. Now let's see what happens when we call our function. Return a equals returns func. And our outside string will just be called it's out. And let's print out what's in our return a variable. So we saw that our outer function was called. Our return a variable actually holds a function. Again, let's put the print in the type of, and we can see what the type of return a is. And it's a function that takes a string and returns a string. And now if we call our return a function inside of a print statement, this is inside. And now we see that inner function was called because we called our function that's inside of our variable, and we passed in this is inside. And we see that we have our outside string and our inside string both available to us inside of this sub function. It's important to note that even though we called our outside parameter up in the line 43 here, we actually stored a copy of that outside value inside of our function scope so that when we called it again on line 47, we didn't need to re-specify what outside was. Swift already remembered that our outside parameter was set to its out. And that's because it maintained a copy of the outside variable for this function scope. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. Please hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, and hit the dinner bell.